Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today, again, we're going to be working on celebrating the seasons and my season is spring. We're really getting into spring now. There's lots of baby birds around, there's uh, ruckuses everywhere in trees. There's uh, a few big predators around too. It's interesting when the little ones come out, the big ones come out. So I hope everyone makes it. It's such cute little things when they're so little. We're getting a lot of wind too, so there's always that worry that the wind will knock them out of their nests or their nest will hit the deck. Yeah. Oh, it's so perilous just getting through those first early weeks of life when you're a little bird. Now, where am I up to? Well, all my blue is gone. Absolutely gone. It took forever, but so worth it. You'll notice to the yellow drifted i think in the last video i started heading up here and i said caught a sort of kept saying it felt like lichen it was sort of just this little touch of this mustardy yellow i really really enjoyed it so i drifted it down here i did a couple clusters i'm yet to put a few beads on this one it was sort of getting late last night and i thought oh i just popped a bit over here and i thought i just can't see enough to to do it so I'll do that next um, and then I just drifted a little bit over here. I just felt like I could scatter it a little bit. So that's where we're at. Down here, I've stitched all of that down. In my last video, I was pinning it and thinking. I've started sort of thinking about this area a little bit more. I definitely will be uh, embroidering those flowers, the fussy cut element there. I then popped in a little lazy daisy. I had like a little bit of um, cotton left from doing something up here and then another one here. I'm yet to sort their centers. So I still wanna do a little bit of work here and I've made a decision on the bottom. I'm going to add that to the bottom of this piece. I'm not gonna do it at the top. Like it seemed like a, a great idea at the end of my video when I thought, oh, I could use it as my attachment to the top of the uh, rolling pin. But I just, I love it so much here and I feel like it connects summer and spring. This pink really connects, this connects, yeah, it just connects. So I think what I wanna do is where the pieces join, there'll be just something of interest linking them. And that allows me, if I want, to drift flowers onto the next piece. That makes sense. So first things first, I want to finish popping a few little beads in that guy. The other thing I wanna do in this video is decide what else I'm doing with this yellow. So I have a container of yellow threads here. I have my ribbons with, I can see some yellow in amongst them. I guess I wanna decide how much yellow is happening now we have yellow up here as well so whatever i figure out here sort of needs to drift up here as well well maybe we could cover it completely depends if we really like it or not so we'll see i haven't really done anything else up here i have unpinned and positioned all of those a little more i sort of fiddled around with them i changed their angle i took them away i put them back so I'm just, I guess, I've got so much to do down here that at this stage, I don't need to make any decisions up there and it's not in my way. So they're just sitting there. And who knows, there might be something else come along that I really love. I know what I'm gonna do with my flowers. They're going to be layers and layers of fabrics. I need them to come out of the work so I don't want to just embroider them. I want to find different fabrics, cut them to the shape of the leaves, drifting through the colours. So that's the plan for them. But um, no rush. I've got plenty to do. Thank goodness this goes for three months. I put hours and hours and hours just into this. Just stitching the blue around the bird, I thought I'll just get it done after I finished filming the video. And we had a day at home doing just paperwork and conference calls and just, you know, it was just a day at home. 
So I thought, I'm going to have this next to me. And the moment something finishes or I'm waiting for something, I'm just going to stitch the blue. And it took till 11 o'clock at night. It took hours. So <laughs> it was good, but it's just nice to have that piece sitting there that you can just grab. So that is the last little bead. There's just so many possibilities with these types of pieces. They are so much fun. Um, I also grabbed out my pre-made flowers. I thought there might be something of interest in there in the yellows and ochre colours. I remember getting a braid, well, it was like a ribbon years ago when I was first doing scrapbooking. So I was looking for three-dimensional flowers. I also grabbed out those. See, there's a little bit of gold and silver in that little bunch of beads. So I've got that put aside. Make a bit of room for myself. But before we get carried away, I'm solving that. I want to trim the felt away so that I can get it ready to stitch to that little button piece. I'll leave the other sides because, you know, who knows what can happen. But that's a definite. So... It's a little bit bigger than I need, which is great. So I've got wriggle room as well. If I want to embellish it further. Oh, you can't even see. What's happening with my camera? Let's go up a little bit. It's really out of whack, isn't it? Oh, I know what happened. That button. I have been searching everywhere for the button. Remember in the last video it took off under the desk? I couldn't find it. I could not find it and um, that's a bit better. I've sort of was looking in this direction thinking it dropped and went that way. I've spent days checking for it. I haven't been going to vacuum because I need the button. I really, really need the button and I finally found it and of course I moved everything around here trying to get a fix on the thing. It had gone to my left and had rolled under one of those stacking plastic drawer thingies. That of course has fabric in it. So I didn't see it until I was on my hands and knees with my cheek on the carpet thinking, okay, if you're not that way, start angling your eyes and bingo, there he was. So he'd literally hit the deck and ricocheted. All right. I'm just lining that up. That's good. That just fits, supports the far extremities of the piece. So I will invisible stitch that down because I might want to do a finish along that edge so or my flowers and embellishing might continue along that edge so I don't want to put too much energy into securing it like with a running stitch or anything because it might not be a running stitch or seed stitch or because it might not actually happen so let's attach this little piece I really like it. It really frames it. I'm a bit of a fan of having a lineal line, at least on two sides. So there may even be something that comes up this side. I just feel like it creates a little bit of interest to your piece. So don't rule out looking for some trims or some ribbon or some I don't know, a piece of fabric that you love that fits. There might be some trimmings from the 
the piece itself. Like that summer piece had those purple words on the side. That might be what I use at the bottom of that one. You've probably noticed by now that bandits developed, seriously, there it is, developed a how. I've been doing a bit of research on it. Other than it being a trait in a dog because that's they don't bark the how like huskies and dogs like that. It can also mean that they're lonely and it's a anxiety thing. And I don't know how that can be when he's sitting at a window looking at me, howling. <laughs> so I'm going to put it down to he has picked up a ancestral trait. I had all of their DNA tested and, you know, for disease and um, just to make sure they're 100% Aussie shepherds and, you know, just a bit of interest to make sure they're nice and healthy and there wasn't any nasty, nasty diseases. And he's definitely 100% Aussie. If I had have not done that, I probably would have started to suspect that he might have some dingo in him. Because they howl, they don't bark. They howl. I remember being on a camping trip at a friend's farm and I may have already told you this story. I'm losing track. I'm running out of stories. <laughs> no, I'm not. There's always something going on. Um, for those of you who are new to my channel, have you heard the dingo story? Being in Australia, they're pretty common out on properties. And um, we were camping had settled in for the night, sitting around the fire. We were all in caravans, so we were certainly not in a situation where we could have got ourselves into trouble if the dingoes had decided to come into the camp. But um, we could hear them in the distance, and it was pitch black. And we were beside a gravel road coming up from out of a creek. And we're talking a canyoned creek, so it was quite a you know, wind in, cross the crossing, wind out, that type of creek. Little um, bitumen, no, not bitumen, gravel road. And the homestead, the owner of the property, who are very dear friends of ours. Hello, Heather, if you're watching. She and her husband often say to us, you know, just bring your vans up, park anywhere you want on the property. And it's a big property. Very, very big. And it's sort of the headlands to a major river system that goes down through Queensland and ends up at the coastline of Bundaberg. So it's just beautiful country. Anyway, we're sitting there in the dark and we could hear these howling in the distance and a couple calls, like there was multiples in the pack. So we knew they were dingoes. So we sort of turned the radio up a little bit and just made a bit of noise and they went quiet so we thought all right okay so they've gone oh something's up the road we're not going to go that way but a few minutes later they started again this time oh i've just got a shiver Ooh, i still oh i've got like a shiver up and down my body because that's it was that type of feeling it's just very eerie anyway sidetracked um, what was I saying? They started up again and we're sitting there going, gee, now they're close. And they were like, felt like they were a couple hundred meters from us to the right. Then they went quiet. And that's when the, your head starts becoming your worst enemy. And we could not hear them for about 10 minutes. We could not see more than, oh, I just got another shiver. <laughs> You guys are getting shivers now too, I bet. So <laughs> we're sitting there in the dark and we're just listening. And we could then, they started up again. But this time, let's say, let's say the caravan is that. That's the road. Can you even see that? Nope. That's the road. 
and that's the that's the river that's wrapping around us and heading on its way. So the crossing was back here. So they've come through the crossing and they've got to, where's the road? Gosh, I should be stitching. They've got to here and went real quiet. And we could not hear a thing. And it was like the night went quiet. Everything went quiet. Not there was much happening out there, but it was quiet. <laughs> And then they started again, except we could hear dogs here and we could hear dogs here. They had split. Oh, I just got a shiver again. <laughs> They'd split and walked around us and they sat for about 10 minutes howling and one had howl here, one had howl here, either side of us. And there was probably 200 metres between us and the riverbank. There was about 50 metres between us and the bitumen. I don't think they were on the bitchin. They sort of felt like they were on, like there was a paddock here with um, with cultivation that had contour banks. And it felt like they were up on those contour banks. They were sort of higher above us, but there was a slope as well. So, oh, goodness me. We didn't know what we should do. Should we just head into the vans for a bit of protection? So we made a bit of banging and clanging and noise did not deter them. They sat there and they howled and suddenly they went quiet and we're like, holy mackerel, they're, they're coming. So we've shot into our vans. We had two shot into our vans and just sat there. And then within a minute, the howling was over here. And then we could hear them going in the distance as they slowly drifted away over the next hour. Oh my goodness. See, I just got another shiver. I have got goosebumps. My hairs are standing, <laughs> I was going to say, on my hairy legs, <laughs> like anything. Oh, it was the most surreal experience. We never heard them again. Now, we've stayed in that campsite many, many times. It's not even a campsite. I think there's even a hay shed with us there. It's just not far from the house if we needed water. Like, the house was just, just up a bit. Oh, boy, oh, boy. They're amazing. So now I've got a howler. That's where my story's heading. Bandit has decided that his mode of conversation is um, howling. <laughs> so I was talking to my husband about it. We were reminiscing about that night and what happened with the dingoes. And we're wondering if... Bandit has heard a dingo because we do have a bit of um, bush around us. There's some farms behind us and beside us with a bit of scrubby stuff in it on their property. So we're wondering if our boy has heard the dingoes. I know there's foxes around and they make a funny little sort of squealy sound. And if that's what he's decided he likes to do I, I don't know I don't know he's not telling us his reasoning anyway I think that's enough of a stitch there because I will be stitching a lot into that corner still so keep your eyes open in the op shops completely different topic now she's off on a tangent again for pillow slips because often pillow slips, pillow cases, cushions, not only have beautiful fabrics, but they often have very interesting ways of closing themselves. And those closures can be handy to work into your piece. So something to think about. I'm just going to put a couple little stitches over here. I am chewing into my time a bit here because I really want to solve the yellow mystery okay yep that's just a few little stitches whiz along there i think by the time i do my embellishing over here it will definitely be secured, but for now, it's not going to flop around and be annoying and catch threads. So when you add your border, your connecting element 
or you may find something you want on the side. Um, you can drift your work onto it. So you can extend your piece, which makes it become very interesting. Okay. All right. Now, yellow. So that's all the yellows I own other than stranded cotton and there are a few in there but I want something that's got a little bit of texture so there is that guy what else have we got got some real lemons Oh, look at that tiny little piece. These are all ones I've picked up at op shops or, you know, when they put a bag of bits together and you get like, that's so my grandmother. She would save that. I don't mind that lemon. And there's a variegated one. That to me is a little bit autumn-y. I wonder if there's any little things inside any of them. That was so cute in that last video I did. I noticed that there was a, a um, what do they call it? A pattern. Here it is here. It's still in there. A little pattern inside. So cute. I should stitch those flowers in somewhere. Oh, see, I'm getting sidetracked. They, to me, that's a grub rose you know where you do a bullion knot yeah we'll do that we will add some bullion knot roses somewhere on this piece I know there's plenty of little spots where some little fancy things can go so I'm thinking I'm going to work those two into here now before I get carried away what else do we have my tiny little bit I wonder if I could get a rose or I'd get a little flower out of that. <clears throat> See, it's too autumn. When you pull out the next yellow, you look at that. There's an orange. I sort of need a little bit of it too because otherwise I'm not going to be able to do a similar thing up here. <clears throat> like I don't mind the... Having this secondary colour combination coming in is making it a little bit more interesting. It's not just all pink, but you have to be very careful. That's probably a better yellow. You have to be careful that you don't... So you could even bring a green in. <clears throat> That you don't want to like finish the sentences. There's some more. That's pretty good too. You got to be careful that you don't um, head off on a tangent, which is so easy. Now let me just go through the pre-made flowers. <clears throat> this is nearly a whole other video. Just going through this one. Is that the ones I had in mind? Oh, they're very autumn. Like I got plenty of pinks. We won't worry too much about them yet because I want to use these as little little details, little fills. So when you get to the end, if you need just that little bit extra touch of something, you start working in these little guys. But I did want to have a little, little rat through the boxes. There's a fine line of flipping into autumn. I don't mind that. That's like a ribbon that has little clusters. Oh, hello, what's this one? Oh, 
I don't want to go too deep into these because it will feel like that I'm sneaking into a different season. They're probably not springy enough. I think I might want to Oh my gosh, there's so many. Oh, these roses. I use those on that French panel. They are just beautiful. Might be use them in summer. Oh gosh, so many options and no idea what I'm going to do. One more container. This one, I ordered all of these from a site in China and they came and they're so bold and so bright and so vivid that I've barely used them. That's a gift that was given to me by somewhere. Oh, hello. You've got potential. <clears throat> Let's investigate this a little further. Oh, I like that. I like you. You're giving me that soft pink vibe. Mm. I like you. Sort of ties it in with some of these linens that I've put in. So I'm going to pin you down as a possibility. I'll put the rest of it away and when we do up here, I'll see him and think, yep. Now I feel like I need something tucked in here. Now, see, we've gone off on another tangent. Let's get the flowers out of the way because that's just becoming, oh, here's a pink. Look, oh. Well, in the mass, it just looks terrible, but maybe just a little one in there. And if I do those, let's take him. Just sort of brings in the brights with them muted. Yeah, there we go. Okay, zip that up. <clears throat> Pin that. We still haven't got into the yellow section. How are we going for time? My goodness sakes. It's sidetracked with dingoes and... Goodness knows what. So. I do like those. So these will be worked into it somewhere. I do like the idea of stitching a little bit of space with this. I'll go to the lighter one. Let's have a little... A little stitch. And that'll be used just to get a little bit of air between it, but still keep that color. So it's just little threads, sort of like a a smear of yellow paint, if you will, if you were painting. Yeah, I like that colour. It's soft. I probably could get a little bit braver with the other orangey, that one there, and it's variegated too. So I think I will do a little bit of yellow stitch. Might only need this lemon, but... I suppose I could then use it's a fair bit there. Use it up. So whatever this tree branch thing is that's drifting out in amongst the marigold tree. We've got a branch of it up there. So this here needs to be quite interesting because up here it's going to be very obvious and very much a point of view. 
So whatever we do, I really need to keep glancing up there and go, okay, that's that will work beautifully up there. That's why I'm thinking I need a little bit of green coming into this scenario because I might need the, the leaves up here. Okay, so that's stitched right into that corner. The little whoosh, the little whoosh of yellow. Now I'll jump up and I'll put a little bit of stitching over here where my thumb is won't need too much work because there's enough going on and I need to address the branch that the bird is sitting on too. So I can at least get some stitches down where the yellow meets the pink. So as I then layer the little clusters of flowers, whatever that may be, the yellow is at least blending in with the pink. And there's stitches between the cluster with the beads in it, the, the colonial knots and the, whatever the feature flower is that's going to sneak into that space. So I might leave it at that because you don't want to put stitches down and then it just ends up being covered anyway. Like that space there is a good one to stitch. That one there where my fingernail is pointing. Gosh, the camera's all out of whack. That's better. Gosh, sorry guys. Didn't realize it was so bumped. Oh, we did find the button. Just took me a while. I was starting to think it was gone forever into the abyss that is the floor. pink rosette down here. These are a lot of fun because you can bead in the folds of that fabric. Now that that would be reasonably easy to make too because they've just created a tube of the, um, what is it, organza, something like that, and then gathered it together and put the big pearl in there. So they are easy to make. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there of how to make satin or silk or fabric flowers. So if you put that into the search, you will be inundated with ways of creating little flowers. So if you've got a fabric that is the right color, but you would like it to be more of a flower, then um, you might be able to make something like that to add to your piece. So let's have a go. At doing something with ribbon. I can't even finish my sentences. Okay, so I'm just going to do poke that through there and that secures the ribbon to my needle. Nice and easy. Then we're going to do what they call a soft knot. So you go through the end of your ribbon, sliding it down, and it just gives enough of a little bit of a bulky bit there. Now, do we do a daisy? Daisy style thing? Oh, enough of the knot not to come through. Yeah, not. I'm too forceful. Just got to find that spot. Yep. So we could do a little daisy. With a little I like that.
just with it pinning itself down. Yeah, I like that. Just subtle. And remember too, this is about exploring the flowers of the season. So you could put one of everything in. You don't have to do multiples of a flower. It looks really interesting when it's only a couple or one, but a lot of different things. You'll just have people standing there looking at your piece and they'll be there for 10 minutes because the more they look, the more they see. That's what I had in my mind for this style of work is because I've got the time. There's an opportunity to, um, I might do, I might do an unusual flower here. I wonder if I, if it's, do I do a daisy or do I do a bud? I'll do it. I'll, um, I'll keep going with the daisy, but I've got another idea for a little bud where you just do three or four of these little petals and then we bring in a, like a leaf to wrap around it. But let's, let's tell a story here. You know me, got to tell a story. Let's get the, the little daisy happening. Then we'll do up here some of the little buds. So we're like, okay, that's that's what this flower will end up like when it opens in spring. Oh. Did you notice that? Sheer po poetry. Okay, so there's our little flower, little yellow guy. Now we're going to do, which way will we face him? I might go down. Let's have him dropping down and then we can bring some leaves up. So we need a couple little petals. Oops, pulled it too hard, but that's okay. I'll put another nice loose one on the other side. So it looks like they're sort of not quite coming out of the bud. And then I might do the same up here because I've got this little bit left. So we'll sneak another one up here. And another one. Will I have enough to finish? It's going to be tight, might only be two, but that's okay. They're my flowers, they can look as odd as I like. Okay, so we can end that off. I think this little pocket of yellow is really going to help the piece. You can already see, like I, when I look up at the camera, that's, pro oh well, I don't have a camera. It's a TV. When the TV is projecting the image, it gives me a longer view. You guys see it already, but when you when you close up, you don't always see it. It's got this little bit of scrappy green. So what we might do, is make some leaves. But first, before we run out of the green, I just want to I always do that. I make this U butte knot and everything's going to be good and then the knot just comes straight through the fabric. I don't know why I bother you with that knot. It's a soft knot they call it, but 
it's too soft. So let's do a different shape. So we'll just do a straight down loop, but we will twist it if we can on the way like that. So it looks like the little petals are caught within. So I'll do another one up there. So it's like encasing the little butts. I hope that green's not too jarring. I don't think so. What's going on? Why can't I get through that? Going through ribbon. <clears throat> okay, so now we can come down here and have a look at just placing out some actual little leaves might do a similar i'm going to do a similar leaf they only need to be little because the the flower is now opened and this little green guy is just peeking through from behind well that's my theory anyway yeah just a few little green bits well until my ribbon runs out might be able to get another one up there I uh, sort of don't mind just that to be honest yeah I'm gonna leave it at that Oh, I just pulled my leaf through. Looks like we're going to do another leaf. There we go. Let's see if I can finish this off without ruining the leaf that I just did. If it doesn't go through, stop, reposition your needle because it means that you've, you're going through probably the ribbon that you just laid down. Come on, these lemon scissors, I love you so, but gee, you're blunt. Why am I bothering with you? So when we get to the leaf side of things, I sort of leave the leaves to last a little bit because sometimes you can come back through a piece of area and just pop in some leaves as well to make it look interesting. At the moment, this is still very blobby. It needs to just gel together like all this does. So there's our little bud-like flowers. You know, get them up to the camera. So there's two little bud-like ones and then the actual <clears throat> flower itself. Let's have a look at you again. I think I need a little bit of the cream as well, just to make those buds stand out. So I might just thread this up. Now the other thing I need to do before I get too carried away is have a good look at these. Are they something I want to use? Definitely, definitely. They're just going to add that little pop of interest. Now there's glue on the back of these little guys. So I don't want to crowd my buds, but I want this little little flush of something. Some softer ones. No, he doesn't look right, does he? Let me zoom in. 
Oh, it's not bad. It does break it up. Yeah, it looks better on the TV than it does in real life, to be honest. Let's get rid of him. I don't like him. That's better. Okay. So what I want to do before they get stitched in is lay a little bit of cream thread in there so that the background is not too yellow. Does that make sense? Just a little, I might even stitch down. So remember I was saying, change the direction of your stitches. It just makes it a little bit more. Actually, we'll go the diagonal. See, that first stitch was so crooked. We're gonna go the diagonal. And then I'll drift around. Around the bud with this diagonal stitch. It'll create a little bit of movement in there. Well, you can't even see. I get so caught up in the stitching. So you see how I'm doing a diagonal cream stitch in there? It's just getting a pop of a pop of light in there because it's also yellow. And I'm going to follow that, that line of stitch or the angle of stitch right down. I'm rushing a little bit because my time is ticking away. The other thing I'll need to do is I will find something to go in the center of our open flower. I'm just going to go back up through there. I feel like I rushed it a bit and it's a bit gappy. I'm just going to lay down just a few extra stitches in there. And this band of stitching will come right down and through this zone here, potentially covering that yellow. So I just feel like I don't need it as such. I've got enough happening. So I might just drop down into the, you know, what would be really cool then, once I get this cream background down here, as I do some little stamens, I might be able to slide some little, what are those beads called that are long and rectangular? It's not cabochon. I don't know. Oh, it's too early in the morning to be thinking about such things. So I'm drifting down this cream. And it'll really make that yellow petals stand out. Shame to go to all that work and you can't see the flower you just put in. So we will do some stitching right through that whole zone there just to create a little bit of interest. Oh, the camera's really out of whack, isn't it? Let me, I need it closer to me so that I can see and you guys can still see. That's better. If I had a bit of forethought, I could have had these stitches already in place, but it doesn't matter because you can sneak your needle in and get some stitches that fill, fill it in. interest down on that bottom edge of all that cluster. Need to... 
which is good because now I can take this thread up to the top of that piece for the big cluster and have that as my background to soften it in. I'll put some fabrics up there as well, some bits and pieces, I'm sure. But that's another day. Just want to get this whole corner completed. I know it doesn't look like much at the moment. It's so slow, this long and short stitch. Or split back stitch or split stem stitch or whatever you're using to fill in background. I did consider putting some fabric there, but I just want it to have a bit of a clean edge. So there was a bit of a gap between all of this and the leaf and the magnolia. It does creep in here, but I figured that that's probably going to be covered anyway. But I just wanted the background fabric to pop through there. can always stitch it in if I decide in the end that I don't like it. I'm running out of thread here, so I will do the last stitch. But you get the picture of I'm getting rid of the yellow and the little bud then will have a bit of a background that it can be seen easily. So I just will finish that off. Now what we'll do in the last few minutes is stitch in the little pre-made and then I can sneak more of that cream stitching in as well. Okay, so the rose Is going in there so it's just a case of a few little stitches to secure him come here my little friend like I've explored this orange yellow blob without it becoming too much well I hope you think the same as I do but it's enough to just put a bit of sunshine into the piece now the next one going in was this softer colored one You can slide in next just to soften that whole space. Now you can easily create these as well with your ribbons. There's so many books and videos out there on ribbon flowers, so definitely dive into that rabbit hole because you only need a few but it'll just add so much more interest to your piece when you get these little raised areas through your work. It's so much fun. And then have a look around for some pre-made pieces. There's heaps of things on Etsy where you can buy just a little, little snippet of these types of... Oh, yeah. I love it. I like how those flowers have picked up on the red berries a little bit. So that edge of that guy, there's like a little fiery red around the perimeter of the ribbon that they've used. 
and it's picked up on the red berries. I'm still not convinced that I'm going to embroider the red berries. I love them. And I know I will not be able to get the interest that the artist has got there. The black, the grey, the white, the cream, the red, the red, the red, the red. Like, there is no way I can stitch that. So I'm not going to attempt it. I will put stitches on my little bird, but it's not going to be a massive amount. I'm going to do highlight stitching on him. If you've got a bird that's very plain and, you know, you can go for it. Like some of those fabrics I picked out originally, they were very plain little birds and it would have been just the shape and the outline that I was looking for. But when you've got a little bird that has 20 colours in it, well, I don't know, I would destroy him. So I will pick out elements of him and I will drop my thread down to a single strand and just do little brush strokes, tiny little brush strokes of the, the needle. Maybe two strands, maybe. I can see little dots on him that in the artwork, because it was Christmas fabric, that was snow. But I love them, so they might become French knots or little beads. There we go. How are we going for time? We've got time. Let's have a look at the beads. And I want to find, actually, this, this one. Let's find a bead for that daisy. So we've got a couple choices. We could do the obvious, which is a gold. That one. I do like. Let's get some thread. The less obvious is a silver. And sometimes that would work. I do love the gold. But let's. So I've got my thread ready. Let's pick out a silver. See what I mean? Sometimes it just lifts the piece without it being too much. The gold actually looks good over in amongst that pink. It carries the gold tones from where we just were. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little goldy, well, maybe. I'm going to put a little, anyway, I don't know. <laughs> Don't, I've just had another thought. I'm going to use the silver bead in the center of this flower. I'm going to go against convention. Let's get my stitch anchored. Oh, I'm really happy with my orange flush and I've got plenty of opportunities to play with that now using all sorts of things be this little so let's stand our little bead up oh, I love it there's not too much of one particular flower style which is so what I wanted to achieve Actually, my bead is wanting to lay down, so I'm going to stitch around it like a wheel. If you want to lie down, you're going to lie down. Seeing it's such a big bead, it needs quite a few stitches just to hold in. And the white cotton looks really cool on it. It's like giving it another softness. It's sort of shiny still, but it has muted it a little bit, which is really, really pretty. I will, when I get off camera, I will go back with my thread and put an extra stitch through those pearls just to make sure they stay. And then that'll probably open up the pearl rabbit hole. 
and I'll end up stitching pearls through here. I can see it now. <laughs> there we go. Lots and lots of stitches holding that down. All right, guys, I think I will leave it at that. I will, for my homework, most likely explore more of this yellow work up at the top. It'll be a bit of work in that. So now that we've got our recipe, I'll work more of this satin stitch down here and I'll go up here and have some fun. And I've got some bits and pieces left. So where's my little tray? They can come with me, that can come with me and I'll need to go and dig out some more of those little flowers. I still haven't used that. I might put a, a flush of yellow through here as well. Gee, this camera is out of whack. Goodness sakes. They can come with me. That's better. Oh, I'm so sorry if that video was a bit, bit ordinary. All right, so I've got a whole yellow thing happening. What fun. Okay, there's my... Where is the yellow flowers that I had? We could do with a couple more of those. Let's grab a, a snip. Where's my scissors? Let's get a snip of them as well in the bucket. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Lovely. All right, guys. I think, um, and I'll need, I'm just looking, I need to take into my project, mini sub project box of the box of the sub projects. I need to take in that. So then I can do a little bit more of that lichen up here. Well, I'm calling it lichen, but it's colonial knots with pearls in it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right, guys, I better go. I oh, love it. It's coming together. All right, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.